Hey folks, so today we are going to be taking a look at Linux Mint 19. Now, I didn't expect to do a distribution review this soon. However, I've been looking at distributions for a more permanent distribution to put on the old Triton laptop, and Linux Mint was one that I've been trying out. And I was particularly interested in Linux Mint 19 because it is, of course, based on the latest long-term support uh, release of Ubuntu. Now, I'm a big fan of the latest um, 1804 releases of Ubuntu, so this, which is, uh, of course, built on it, is, uh, well, there are high hopes. And yes, I've had a pretty good time with this distribution. It's probably not going to be the permanent resident on the Triton laptop because it's just a little bit on the resource. Uh, is it, well, it's a little heavy on resources. Not specifically, it's just that the Triton laptop um, doesn't exactly have the fastest processor. So I might be looking for something a little bit more lightweight. However, when it comes to Linux Mint distributions, typically, uh, well, the Linux Mint distributions are the family of distributions that I usually have to tweak the least in order to get them how I like it. They have a lot of um, installed applications out of the box that that I think that other distributions could take a lead from. And I'm specifically thinking of things like Redshift. Uh, more and more distributions are coming with uh, a red uh, with Redshift or a Redshift type programmer color temperature adjustment tool. Um, and it's, uh, the idea behind them is that it uh, adds a red hue to um, your screen in the evenings so that the blue light just doesn't keep you awake all night and it sort of you know it uh, it keeps your uh, your sleeping rhythms in line and so forth but uh, I have had a great time with Linux Mint 19 so I thought I might just do a bit of a quick video um, sort of demonstrating it demonstrating it a little bit this isn't going to be particularly in-depth because like I said I didn't intend to do uh, a full review on it um, but I did uh, install it into a virtual machine I haven't even upgraded it so far and even though um, it is in a virtual machine I have pretty much tried it on bare metal now for uh, at least a week maybe about two perhaps uh, and it settled in nicely and uh, and I'm really quite enjoying it so even though this isn't a complete install uh, this is just going to be me demonstrating a few of the things that they've changed but uh, the good thing about Linux Mint in general is that it doesn't make drastic changes so if you're familiar with like previous versions of Linux Mint then you probably have a, a pretty rough idea about what to expect even with a, uh, a major upgrade like a uh, major upgrade like with 19. Now one of the things that they have added in is the welcome screen and you know it it might not necessarily be as pretty as, for example, the Ubuntu Mate welcome screen, but these things can be quite uh, quite useful, particularly when it talks about things like you know your first step. So you can set up your your snapshots. Now snapshots are a new thing that came in with Linux Mint. Uh, basically, uh, it's a way of backing up your system. Um, there we go, and then you can sort of. Uh, yeah, basically create a snapshot, restore snapshots. So if anything happens to your computer, uh, you can then just select a previous snapshot and then uh, effectively, you know, restore your system from there. Uh, it's a great tool, and I believe there is something similar for it in the Mac world, although I'm not familiar with Macs, so don't hold me to that point. It's called Time sh Time Shift here, but I think the the Apple version is like Time Machine or something. So it's it's a little bit of a blatant copy. Now, the thing is with it is that you do get to choose whether or not you use rsync or butterfs. And for newcomers to Linux, I'm not entirely sure they would be um, privy to the distinction between butterfs and rsync. Uh, and to be honest, I'm not entirely sure what the benefits of using one over the other. The only thing I know about butterfs is that it's in its earlier uh, days in its younger days it tended not to be considered particularly stable although as I understand it it has grown quite a lot since that reputation was formed but uh, anyway so this is interesting and actually as a result of this new time shift uh, application the update manager has changed now the update I haven't done anything with the update manager now however you may notice even just with the the basic mint updates you know being the only package that's uh, that they want to update right now there is no uh, sort of ranked updates in order of riskiness or, or importance or source or anything like that. Usually they're sort of color coded so that you can choose whether or not you just want to apply the security updates or the software updates or all of that kind of stuff. Um, and there are pros and cons to uh, to their various different update policies, but they decided to simplify the system even more and just have a standard update procedure just like most of the other distributions because if that fails, you can use the... Um, uh, you can use the backup tool, the time shift, just to roll back to the last um, last snapshot and you'll be fine. Um, and I have heard people 
uh, talk about using this kind of strategy with rolling distributions because even if you're running something like Arch, uh, which is often considered a breakable distribution because sometimes if you upgrade something and something doesn't click the way that you know is expected, people have uh, you know people have, um, have have broken systems like that before. But if you have a snapshot of before the upgrade, then you can just do a bit of a rewind and you're fine. Now, I do have to say just from personal experience that Arch-based systems. I don't think they've ever broken on me, but it is that sort of um, scenario that people are very much aware of and people fear. And maybe it's because of that that the arches um, and arch-based distributions mitigate against it specifically. But you know, that's a discussion for another day. The update manager is simplified, even though it is still the Mint update tool, uh, and as a result of their improved backup application. So that's pretty good there. The driver manager works pretty much the same way as it does in Ubuntu, and. Uh, yeah, and that's about it. So that's quite a uh, quite a, a simple welcome screen, but I think it covers most of the bases, if not all of them. So we can close this. Now you may notice that there aren't any drop shadows behind the windows. That's simply because I'm running it in a virtual machine and it's uh, software rendering mode. So it does rely on these shadows to to pop the windows together because you may notice that the windows with you know without any sort of distinction around the edges can sort of bleed together a little bit i've never been too fond of this i've no you know relying on the drop shadows to to let the windows pop out i've noticed the kde breeze theme does this as well but um okay so another thing about it is the software manager now the software manager is pretty similar to, to what we're used to with with 18.3 it seems to be either based on or the gnome software tool we can have a look at that so it's, it's called mint install but it's very similar to the gnome uh, software center so i would expect that it's you know one is based on the other you've got pia manager which manages the pia vpn you've got audacity so it's a fantastic um a package management tool very easy to install stuff no problems with that. And it even comes with uh, a few flat packs there as well. Uh, and I believe these come from Flat Hub, if I'm not mistaken. So, rather, so, and also you can install snap packages as well. So you do have a decent selection of software that is um, going to be up to date as well. So Linux Mint uses the latest long-term support release of Ubuntu, uh, even for the distributions like, for example, when we see 19.1, uh, 19.2, .1, and 19.3, they will still be based on Ubuntu 18.04. And part of that is like uh, stability because Linux Mint, uh, they tend to put stability very, very high up the agenda because Linux Mint is intended for, for converts from Windows. And one of the things you really don't want to have uh, people from Windows experience is, is bugs and instability because that will just put them right off. And um, and even, you know, people are willing to sacrifice uh, newer versions of, of software if if they just have something that just works and is stable. And there are a number of people who I administrate Linux uh, distributions for on their personal machines. And uh, I installed, I, my go-to install is Ubuntu Mate. So there are a number of people I know with machines with Ubuntu Mate at 16.04 on. And I asked them if they wanted to upgrade to 18.04, um, but they all said no because they're happy with what they got and they're happy to wait until the um, until the the support runs out before before upgrading, because for most people, once they've got a system that fits them, they're not really interested in uh, much else. Really, uh, obviously, with with myself and I think a lot of enthusiasts that might watch this channel, we're a bit more interested in the latest and greatest software. But uh, of course, with Linux Mint, you kind of get the best of both worlds now with with flat packs and the ability to install snap images. And of course, there are app images as well, which are which are pretty darn good. So we've got a lot of options here these days, even though it's got a very slow moving base behind it. And I think Linux Mint is really gonna come into its own over the next couple of years now as a result of that paradigm. So good on them. So yeah, great software center there, great software center there. Um, and I gotta say, if I'm completely honest here, there's a few good background images, but um, Oh, that's lovely, isn't it? Yeah, actually, no, those are pretty good, pretty good background images there. Oh, that's glorious. Uh, as you can see, they've changed the theme. They've got, I believe this is called Mint Y, and it's a flat theme. Uh, looks really quite nice, although I would prefer maybe some definition around the edges. But then again, the um, 
when you've got hardware acceleration on, you do have those shadows that pop the windows. Uh, the icon theme is particularly nice as well. I quite like the slightly more modernized flat theme. You've got the monochrome uh, theme there down on the left. So it looks absolutely beautiful. And Cinnamon is a good looking desktop and I haven't had any issues with it in terms of stability. So that's pretty good there. Nice little menu. The menu is very easy to navigate. The search is, is easy. Uh, you can use the Windows key to, to activate it. You've got your favorites down the left hand side. Very simple, very customizable. However, for a distribution that seems to place itself as a a good hopping point for people coming from Windows, I'm always I always wonder why they uh, put the terminal in the quick launch bar down here at the bottom, because that I think would would possibly put off people coming from Windows. It's a very small thing, and it's unlikely to be a deal breaker for for anyone. But it's I've always wondered why the terminal is is perhaps there and. Um, you know, my, you know why, why, why it's not possibly just you know you just have that one there as well. Uh, but anyway, that's just uh, that's just me, and it's been there for quite some time, so it's obviously a conscious, consciously made decision. So um, yeah, and they got you got the uh, you got the terminal there, which um, is your pretty standard terminal application there. So it's GNOME terminal, quite a f quite a fair number of GNOME apps about. Um, yeah, so all these tools down here in the in the taskbar work. Um, and the thing about the Cinnamon desktop is that I've noticed, and I think it might be quite interesting to demonstrate this using the uh, system settings here. Uh, everything here, it's all quite easy, all quite straightforward, and it's not a particularly customizable desktop. You can do more than you used to be able to do with it, but the idea behind Cinnamon is simplicity and stability and just general straightforwardness, I think, um, and, and a degree of sort of pragmatism and consistency. So there you know it's not as customizable if you wanted a more customizable desktop you could go with linux mint mate or xfce where there are a lot more options uh, that it gives you uh, but here it gives you it gives you some uh, some customizability it gives you desktop um, apps as well and and there are extensions and hot corners so it's certainly not lacking in features but it does seem to be a more standardized desktop for a more um for people that just want a good out of the box experience and aren't really so interested in, in tweaking the little things Although then again, you know, it, it, there are places that people can um, can do that. And uh, oh, okay, so there's some uh, there's a well, there's a privacy setting there, um, and there's prefer so yeah, it's a very straightforward, very easy to use uh, system settings there. Um, and uh, there are quite a few. It's definitely worth reading out the new features. So you've got time shift, the new update manager, uh, the welcome screen, uh, the software manager. That's all good. Uh, there are performance improvements, and I did, I have actually noticed that. There definitely seem to be, because the thing is with the Triton laptop is that even though it can, in realistically, it can run um, Linux Mint Cinnamon quite easily, when you start putting on things like, you know, YouTube videos and, and Twitch streams and stuff like that, where you start, then you start ramping up the CPU, and that's when the fan starts spinning. So it's certainly, uh, as, as a laptop, fine in handling those things, but I kind of want to keep the CPU usage as low as possible so that the fans just keep quiet. That's really my thinking behind uh, a lot of that, which often means choosing desktops that lean more on, on GPU than CPU. Uh... I, th I believe KDE is uh, k the KD new KDE plasma desktop is particularly good with that one. I had Kubuntu on the Triton; uh, it ran like an absolute dream. Um, but uh, then again, so did Linux Mint Cinnamon. It's just when you start getting, you know, and the YouTube website is just so bloated now. And I don't even understand why it needs to use the type of resources that it does. It doesn't seem to have any more features. It just seems to, you know, move the interface around a little bit, and for some reason, it just requires a whole bunch of um, of extra resources as a result of that. I, I don't know why. Is it lazy programming, or is there something under the hood that we ought to know about? I don't know. Uh, so you've got Nemo, which is the uh, the file manager. Good file manager. I can't say I'm particularly fussy. I just use what comes with the, the desktop, but, uh, but that's good there. Oh, the multimedia codecs now include Microsoft fonts. That's kind of interesting. Uh, one of the things that I actually do on the Manjaro uh, machine that I've got that I'm actually using the virtual machine on now is that because I don't like installing the Microsoft fonts, I actually prefer to have as you know try and keep as many of my fonts on my um, on my computer as free as possible. However, when you um, start using Wine and you start using Windows software, then you start requiring perhaps the occasional Microsoft font, and that's where programs like Play on Linux and Lutris are quite good because it allows you to have containers for your Wine installations, and then you can install Microsoft fonts without them leaking into your your office suite and stuff like that 
Um, and Pigeon was removed as a default from the default software selection. I gotta say, it's you know that's 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 getting pretty old now, isn't it? Uh, and I don't think people that I don't know anyone that uses Pigeon anymore. Uh, so yeah, so quite quite some new artworks. That's quite nice, and uh, it will receive updates until 2023. So that is a nice long time. That's five years of support. So there we go. Excellent stuff. So I don't think I've got too much more to say about it, really. Um, other than yeah, I've had it on the uh, on the Triton laptop now for a couple of weeks. Uh, it looks nice. It runs well. Uh, I haven't had any issues with stability, although you don't tend to with Linux Mint. And actually, truth be told. The past couple of years, I, I have, you know, the stability in Linux distributions is is through the roof. It's absolutely fantastic. So, um, I've got to say, uh, choosing between distributions to actually put on the Triton laptop, th I mean, Linux Mint Cin Cinnamon would be a fine distribution to run on it as well. So I don't think I've got too much more to say than that. Um, I know I've sort of been talking about this as a distribution ideal for people coming across from Windows, but truth be told, I haven't used a Windows machine in years now. So I'm sort of this is sort of that's sort of like second hand um a second hand perspective I've got there. But, you know, just speaking for myself, out of all of the distributions that I try on a regular basis, this is the one that I have to you know, sort of set up the least to get it how I like it. Um, and that sort of goes for, for all of the Linux Mints, the, the Mate and the XFCE version as well. Although it does kind of feel that the, I don't know if there's, you know, if, if, it, if it's necessarily worth having three Linux Mints, because they are sort of, all of them are quite similar, but I, I guess if the demand is there. Um, I've got to say, as a result of checking this out, I'm really kind of curious to see what Linux Mint Debian edition is going to start looking like now. Um, and with you know uh, flat packs and snaps coming along, I I see little reason why Linux Mint shouldn't shift its you know its flagship status over to Linux Mint Debian Edition. I think there's a lot of potential there, and from what I am told, Linux Mint Debian Edition runs significantly faster than uh, Linux Mint based on Ubuntu Edition. So um, anyway, that's just a, f a few thoughts, but. Uh, but really, I don't have too much to say on Linux Mint because it is just such a consistent distribution. Um, my thoughts on it are very similar to my thoughts on 18.3, and they were similar to my thoughts on 18.2, and and so on. Because yeah, it's a consistent distribution that gets incrementally better with every release and has great out of the box defaults. Um, so another great one from from the Linux Mint team. Um, Thank you so much for another fantastic distribution, if any of the Linux Mint team happen to be watching. Um, but that's about it for me today, I think. Um, so, yeah, um, a great distribution. Thanks all for watching. Let me know if you guys have any thoughts down in the comments section below. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.